everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs, and I'd like to welcome you back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you a few different color combinations that you can use for layered flowers, and then I'm going to show you a couple of card projects with some tips and tricks that I made with the new Pop Art Flowers card kit. With a wide variety of dye ink colors, you can create beautiful layered looks for the stamps in this kit and many of the layering stamps that you have in your collection. And if you head over to my blog, there will be pictures of each of these card projects and underneath all of the color combinations listed for both the flowers and the leaves. Now to get started, I have all of my stamps already laid out on my MISTI for all three layers. And then what I do is I put the cardstock in different positions on the MISTI and that allows me to stamp all three layers without repositioning the stamps each time. This is a great way to mass produce these flowers and cut them out and save them for other projects. Now the first color combination I'm going to use is Wild Dandelion, Sweet Mango, and Tomato Soup. I'm going to start out with my cardstock in the bottom position of the MISTI and I'm going to ink up just the solid stamps using some of the Wild Dandelion ink. Now if you want a darker yellow than the Wild Dandelion produces with the first pass, you can then stamp it a second time using the Wild Dandelion and that color will just get a little bit deeper. So I'm going to ink that up a second time to make that yellow a little bit deeper. Now once I have that, I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of this piece of cardstock. This is going to allow me to have six flowers with every piece of cardstock. Now the key to doing this is to make sure that when you stamp these that you always use the same size piece of cardstock once you have all these stamps laid out. So in this case, my cardstock is three and three quarter inches by five inches. And now I'm going to clean off these stamps and then I'm going to move the cardstock to the top position of the MISTI. And I'm going to use the second color, which is Sweet Mango. And you can see once I stamp that, all of those second layers are perfect. Now I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to ink it up once again with Sweet Mango and then I'm going to stamp it. And now I have my perfect second layer complete. Now once that's done, I'm going to put this cardstock into the next position. I'm going to put my cardstock at the 7 inch mark because that's where it was when I laid out my third layer. And you always want to make sure that you clean your stamps from each layer because those stamps are going to touch that cardstock and you don't want anything to transfer. So now I'm going to use tomato soup for my third layer. So it's those three stamps in the middle. I'm going to ink those up and then I'm going to stamp those right over the other layers. And you can see how beautiful that color combination is the wild dandelion, the sweet mango, and the tomato soup. Now I'm flipping it over and again lining that bottom edge up at the 7 inch mark and stamping. And now I have six flowers ready to go. Now the beauty of doing the layout this way with all of the stamps on the MISTI at one time is you can create multiple passes. You can see I did one where I used the third layer. I used Tangerine Twist instead, and I just wanted to show you what that looked like. That's a nice combination as well. Now my next card, I'm going to use some Innocent Pink, Dusty Rose, and Faded Brick. I'm going to start with the Innocent Pink, and again, I'm going to stamp just the solid flowers, and my cardstock is tucked in that bottom right-hand corner. And with the Innocent Pink, if you want to do a darker version of it, you can just go ahead and re-ink it. So I'm going to take a look at it when I'm done here. And once I was done, I decided that I definitely wanted to stamp it a second time. So I'm going to do that. And again, that's the beauty of the Misty. 
You can add layers, you can add colors, you can change the color to make it a little, a little bit darker by adding another color on top. And you can see the innocent pink gets nice and deep when you stamp it a second time. So now I'm going to move that cardstock up to the next position of the Misty. And then I'm going to clean my stamps. And my second layer is going to be Dusty Rose. Now Dusty Rose is a beautiful pink that has a tint of warmth to it. Just a little bit of warmth in there. And that's perfect for the Innocent Pink because Innocent Pink is a very warm pink. If you like cooler pinks, you can use Bubblegum Pink and Passionate Pink instead. But I love this combination. I think it's just beautiful. And now I'm going to move the cardstock to the third position, which is once again, I'm going to put it at that seven inch mark. And I'm going to stamp my final layer in faded brick. Now faded brick is one of those colors that works with a lot of different combinations as that third layer. It's great for reds. It's also great for multicolor looks, which I'm going to do next, and it's perfect for this combination. So you can see I flipped that over and put it back at the seven inch mark again, and now I'm going to stamp it again. And look at all of that beautiful depth in those flowers. Now my next color combination is one of my favorites, and this uses sweet corn peach bellini, and again, the faded brick. Now this is one of those multicolor flower looks that I just love. So I'm going to start with sweet corn as my base. So that's my lightest color. And then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm going to stamp it again on the other side. So I'll have six flowers of this color combination as well. And then once I stamped this, I did want it to be a little bit deeper. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to stamp it again. And I just love using the Misty stamping tool for this because you can double up and triple up on color and get it as deep and dark and rich as you want. And it's always going to be perfect. So now that I have my sweet corn done, I'm going to put that up at the top corner. And then I'm going to clean those stamps. It's always important to clean the stamps, even if they're not going to touch the paper, because then you won't, won't transfer any ink onto the pad of your Misty. Now my second color is Peach Bellini. And I'm going to stamp that. I'm going to ink up those second layer of stamps up at the top and stamp those onto the sweet corn. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do it again. Now, I really love this combination for fall. The sweet corn, the peach bellini, and the faded brick make such a nice fall flower combination. And with generic flowers like these, they can be used any time of the year. Now I'm going to turn the cardstock to the seven inch mark, and I'm going to clean those top stamps, and then I'm going to use the faded brick. And it's so funny how different the faded brick looks with this combination than it did with the pinks. With the pinks, it just kind of blended in and became just a darker version of the pink. But when you stamp it over this combination, it becomes a deep, dark brick. And again, I'm flipping it over to the seven inch mark, and I'm going to ink up those stamps one more time and stamp them. So that combination is sweet corn, peach bellini, and faded brick. Now my next combination, of course, is one of my absolute favorites because you guys know how much I love aqua and teal and turquoise. So the colors I'm using here are sea glass. I'm starting with that. And then once I have the sea glass done, I'm going to add some blue lagoon. And Blue Lagoon is a much bluer teal than Turquoise Sea, so it's a great layering color for over the sea glass. And then my final color is 
the tranquil teal. And that's a real deep, dark teal. And that is just a lovely combination. Now, I'm going to give you a little trick here. If you only have two ink pads that coordinate, this is a great thing to do. So I'm using Lovely Lavender and Plum Punch. So I'm starting with the Lovely Lavender, but now I'm going to put a piece of cardstock over my piece that I'm working on, and I'm going to ink up the stamps with Plum Punch. And I'm going to stamp them off once, and then stamp them onto that first layer. This gives me the perfect mid-tone color that goes along with the Lovely Lavender and the Plum Punch. Now I'm going to put that cardstock at the 7 inch mark. I'm going to clean the stamps and then I'm going to use Plum Punch directly onto the stamps and stamp that directly onto the cardstock. And you can see how the Plum Punch and then the Plum Punch stamped off once look beautiful together and it looks like a beautiful third color in there that was the perfect mid-tone. So now I'm going to show you a couple of card projects that I made with those flowers. I'm going to start with the Sassy Stripes stencil that comes in the Pop Art Flowers kit and I'm going to use some Sandy Beach ink and I'm going to use a very light-handed blend over this stencil with the Sandy Beach. I'm using one of the Picket Fence Studio's life-changing brushes. And then I'm going to take the stencil off and I'm going to apply it in the opposite direction so I can create a little plaid look. And again, using the same color, the sandy beach, and a light-handed touch, I'm going to go over the entire stencil in the opposite direction. Now once that's done, you have a nice little plaid look, but it's very subtle and it won't be distracting. Here I have two die cut pieces. These are both cut with the Thermoweb and Gina K Designs large and small oval dies. And I am adhering that right onto the mat of my Misty with just a little bit of tape runner. I'm going to use one of the greetings from the Wrapped in Love stamp set that also comes in the Pop Art Flowers kit. And I'm going to stamp that with some black ink. Now you can use any greeting for this, but I find that these greetings work really well. They're very elegant, and I make lots of thank you and birthday cards. So those are the main greetings in that set. Now here I've stamped out a bunch of the leaves and this color combination is the apple mint, jelly bean green, and fresh asparagus. So I'm going to tack that oval down into the center of my card and you can see I mounted that plaid pattern onto some black and then onto a white card base. And now I'm going to lay out the flowers the way I want them onto this oval. So I have that nice leaf pattern draping across the bottom. And then I have these two smaller leaves that are going to jut out from the sides. And then I'm going to place the larger flower right over all of those raw edges. Then I'm going to use the little greenery for the bud I'm going to slip that over the flower and overlap it a little bit on top of that large flower and then place that bud stamp, that bud flower, tuck it right inside there. So I actually tacked down all of the greenery right to the oval and then I popped up that flower, as you can see using a foam square. And I did the same thing with the bud, and then I added a couple of little pearls just as a nice accent. So there is the first finished card project. Now for my second project, I'm going to use the gauze background stamp. And again, I'm using Sandy Beach. I really love Sandy Beach ink. If you don't have that ink color, it's a great one to pick up because it just gives you a nice texture 
so it doesn't really interfere with any of the colors in your card project. It just appears to give it some texture, even through stencils or like you see here with this background stamp. Now I'm actually going to make two panels because one of them I'm going to cut into a strip that I'm going to use in a unique way. So I'm going to stamp a second one the same way. And then I'm going to cut a strip of it off at one and a half inches. So that's a one and a half inch by three and three quarter inch strip. And then I'm going to mount that onto a black strip that's just a little bit bigger on the top and the bottom. Now I used our heart circle die to cut this heart circle frame and I just love this and I really wished that I had had one like it in an oval to go along with an oval that I want to use for my card but I didn't have one so what I decided to do was cut this one out and then once it was cut out I was going to cut it in half using my paper cutter. So I'm just kind of measuring it up here and making sure that I'm about at the halfway point and then I'm going to cut this in half. Now this is a great way to use some of your fancy circle die cuts and turn them into ovals. So now I have the Thermoweb ovals again and I'm going to adhere the two oval panels together. That's the large and the small together. And then I'm going to adhere half of this heart circle to the top of the oval. And I'm only going to tape right along the top because I want to make sure that there's some free space in there. And you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm taping that on to the top. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing at the bottom. So I'm going to tape that part to the bottom. And again, I'm just going to tape around the perimeter, leaving that center area of the oval open. Now, once that is adhered together, the rest of that oval is free. So now I can take this strip and first I'm going to adhere these two panels together. So you'll notice that I've cut these so that there is a border at the top and the bottom, but no borders on the sides. So that's going to fit perfectly right into my card. And then I'm going to slip that underneath. And you can see from the back here, I'm going to slip it underneath at the top and at the bottom. And that's going to cover that raw edge. So it's going to appear as though that circle actually is an oval and it's going all the way around. And then I'm just going to tack it onto my card using some adhesive dot runner. I just want to make sure the strip is even before I do that. And then I can put adhesive all over the back and I can adhere it to my card front. Now, once that's in place, I'm going to take the birthday greeting from the Wrapped in Love stamp set. And that Wrapped in Love is part of the Pop Art Flowers kit. And I'm going to put that whole panel into my Mini Misty. And I'm going to ink this up with some black ink. And stamp that right onto that oval. And you can see not all of it transferred, but because I'm using the Misty, I could go back and press it down again. Now I have another piece of greenery here and I'm going to actually cut this piece apart. So I'm using some scissors here and I've picked a spot where I can cut this apart. I love these flowers in this longer leaf but sometimes I want it to be a shorter leaf and it's easy to do just by cutting it apart because most of the raw edge is going to be tucked behind the flower anyway. So I'm just going to trim that off but I didn't really even need to and I'm going to place that right there and then for this piece I'm going to just use my scissors and cut that little V out between the one petal or one leaf and the other leaf. So I'm just going to cut around that leaf and then I'm going to finish it off by cutting around the other leaf. And then that piece is going to go over on the other side. 
And once I tack those down to my oval using some adhesive dot runner, then I can pop up that beautiful turquoise flower into the center using a foam square. Now that is the heart circle version. And I also did it with the elegant oval frame that we have in our collection. That frame wasn't long enough, so I just cut it in half and stretched it out and put a thinner strip in the middle. And then I accented the strip with a few little pearls. Now for my final project, I'm going to use the Sassy Stripes stencil again. And once again, I'm using that Sandy Beach ink. But this time, I'm not going to do the crisscross look. I'm going to just do it on the diagonal. For my greeting panel, I'm going to use the ThermoWeb large and small circle dies. And I've cut those out, adhered them together, and now I'm going to use my adhesive dot runner to adhere that right to my MISTI. I'm going to use some greetings from the Reasons to Celebrate stamp set. And this is part of our Wreath Builder collection. I love this stamp set because it has so many different greetings that you might not necessarily want a whole stamp set for, but you'll need them a couple times in your card making career. So for example, it has things like congratulations on your new home, on your new car, um, it has wedding greetings, bridal shower, baby shower, and in this case, I'm combining greetings to say congratulations on your retirement. So now that I've stamped that and I've adhered my card pieces together, I'm going to adhere that circle right into the center of the card. It's actually up just a little bit higher to the top, closer to the top than the bottom, but not much. And now I'm going to use some of these cutout pieces and I'm going to create a wreath around that circle. So I've got a couple of the pink combination flowers and then I have three of those longer leaves stamped out. Now I'm going to adhere, the, adhere these using foam squares. I do have white foam squares in my ThermoWeb collection, but I didn't have any handy, so I'm using the black ones. And I really do like the black ones, and they don't show through on the other side, which is really nice. So if that's all you have close by, you certainly can use them. And I'm popping these leaves up over that circle. And I'm just going to lay the rest out to make sure I like the way it lays out. And you can see that this whole wreath is a little bit higher toward the top, but that's because my biggest flower is going to go at the bottom and then my smaller flowers are going to go closer to the top. So I've continued to use foam squares to put all of my leaves, my leaves down. And now I'm going to use, actually I decided to use adhesive and I'm just going to lay the flower right onto the leaf cluster. And I'm trying it in different positions but I like it up just a little bit higher. And then I'm going to use the smaller buds to cover the raw edges where the other parts connect. And with the buds I'm going to actually change the position of them so they're not all facing exactly the same way. So it's a little bit more whimsical like a real wreath would be. So there's my finished wreath card using the Pop Art Flowers kit. And for my sample that I originally did, I added some pearls in there too. That just adds a touch of elegance. So here are my finished card projects, and I know this was a long video, but I hope you learned a little bit about the different color combinations and a few fun new tips and tricks for making these cards. Here are a couple other videos I think you might enjoy, and I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.